Um, we want to uh, share with you some announcements for this, our final Sunday of 2019, and of this uh, great, amazing, interesting decade. <laughs> We want to extend a heartfelt thanks to everyone who participated in our glorious Christmas Eve celebration. A thank you to those who worked behind the scenes and to those who participated during the service. If you weren't able to join us Tuesday night, I encourage you to go online to our website and to YouTube to watch it. It was really something special. We also want to give a thanks to the anonymous donor who gifted a TV DVR to the Children's Club. We along, we along with the kids and teachers appreciate your generosity and kindness. The calendar may say that Christmas is over, but here at Founders, we know the season of our giving continues. We are collecting new unwrapped toys and games for the hospice children in Tijuana. And here's another opportunity to give. We are accepting donations of winter clothing, especially socks, blankets, coats, and sleeping bags, desperately needed this winter. Do you, did you know that it was colder in LA on Christmas Day than it was in Chicago? That is not right. So please bring, so please bring your donations on any Sunday. This Thursday, January 2nd, beginning at 7 p.m. Oh, I'm sorry, today, sorry, thank you. Today we are celebrating Kwanzaa with a special sermon delivered by our very own queen, Reverend Barbara Haynes. And then finally, this Thursday, January 2nd, beginning at 7 p.m. in the upper room, Alive with Dignity will screen the documentary, How to Survive a Plague by David France. So if you're able to come out as, a, as, as an ally, a supporter, or one of our beloved family, please do. And now, let's invite the Spirit to come in and get our praise and worship underway. Amen. Let's rise as we're able this morning and join and sing our opening song.
Would you pray with me this morning? God, thank you for this time we have to be in this place in this house of worship, in this place where we can freely raise up the name of Jesus, our Christ. We thank you for your spirit that's already moving in here, and we thank you, God, that we can experience you for ourselves today. We ask you to bless everything that's said and done here. Bless our our message and messenger today. Anoint her with the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us each receive everything we need to receive from you, so that we can go out and be the voice crying out in the wilderness to prepare the way of the Lord once again. We ask this in the name of Jesus our Christ and all that is holy. Amen. 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 You may be seated. And good morning. We want to welcome you on this chilly morning in Los Angeles. If you are brand new with us today, I'm Reverend Keith Mazingo, the senior pastor. And let me, would you just wave at me if you're brand new and let me wave back. Amen. We've got several people around. We have a little flower to give you and a little information about our church. And if you do not have a church home, well, we hope you do too. Welcome home. We've been waiting for you. Amen. We're so glad to have um, quite a few. If you notice up here, some of these people right here are Reverend Barbara's family. And we just want to say welcome to them. so delighted that they came to worship with us today, and we are always glad when uh, Reverend Barbara preaches for us. She's such a blessing. Amen? Amen. And we don't get to hear her often, but when we hear her, we know we have heard. (laughs) Amen. And we are delighted that she is speaking for us, and thank you all for coming. We have new new, uh, engaged people from Christmas in our family. Amen. So there's going to be a, ma- a wedding coming up. So congratulations. We're also glad to uh, have Reverend Wayne Lindsay with us again. Always a pleasure to have him with us in service. We want to say welcome to those folks who are joining us online. If you um, are here online, do check in with your attendance. We keep up with it and uh, keep a record of it. And we just want to let you know that. Uh, send us your prayer requests or any prayer needs or comments and we appreciate hearing from you every week and we are always glad to see all of you here in the sanctuary so i would invite you to take just a couple of minutes to welcome each other to this place the Reverend Barbara Haynes, simply because 21 years ago when I walked through the doors of MCCLA, I knew nothing about Kwanzaa. Mm-hmm. This woman has birthed a nation, mm-hmm. has told us what it means, what Kwanzaa um, the one in June, Juneteenth? Yes. <laughs> 19th of June. Mm-hmm. Yes. She told us what it was all about. And when it comes from an elder, although she's not that much older than I, <laughs> you cherish it, and you keep it, and you put it in your heart. And Barbara and Evelyn will always be in our heart. And thank you, Barbara. As we celebrate Kwanzaa, 
We light the seven candles and we recall the seven principles. There's, we'll pause just briefly after each candle is lit. And after the seventh principle is read, we will all say Harambe together. The first principle is the emoja. We light the candle of emoja. To symbolize the unity of all people. We, we give, give thanks, thanks for the election of Reverend Elder Cecilia Eggleston as the moderator of our denomination. Kuji Chagulia, self-determination. We light the candle of Kuji Chagulia. To symbolize our right to determine our community's destiny and future. We give thanks for the models of courage and authentic identity that God has put in our midst. Ujima, Ujima, third principle, collective work and responsibility. We light the candle of Ujima to show the need of our community to work together and to be responsible for one another. We give communities, by our volunteers, our board, our staff, and all of those who have quietly reached out to those in need. Ujama, we light the candle of Ujama to show the need for our community to improve its economic situation by cooperating with one another. We give thanks for the commitments of treasure to our work and for our sharing with MCCs in other countries. The fifth principle is Nia, purpose. We light the candle of Nia. to show our community's resolve, its purpose, to make all of our people stronger. We give thanks for the opportunity to testify about our resolve to stand for justice. Kuamba. We light the candle of Kuamba. to symbolize the creative spirit of all our people. We, we give, give thanks, thanks for the commitments of talent by those who beautify our sanctuary, adorn our worship, and care for our grounds. The seventh principle is Imani, faith. We light the candle of Imani to show our faith in God and our faith in ourselves. We give thanks for deepening our vision of calling your name with many voices. Let us all pull together. Harambe! Harambe. You can do better than that. Harambe! Harambe. Sacred readings. The first reading is taken from Galatians chapter 3, verses 23 to 25, and chapter 4, verses 4 through 7, taken from the message version. Until the time we were mature enough to respond freely in faith to the living God, we were carefully surrounded and protected by Mosaic law. The law was like those Greek tutors with which you are familiar, who escort children to school and protect them from danger of destruction. Sacred 
sacred reading comes from the letter of Apostle Paul to the Colossians, chapter 1, verses 15 through 20, taken from the New King James Version. Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by Jesus, all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through Jesus and for Jesus. And Jesus is before all things. And in Jesus, all things consist. And Jesus is the head of the body, the church who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. And that that in all things Jesus may have the preeminence, for it pleased the Creator that in Jesus all the fullness should dwell, and by Jesus to reconcile all things to Jesus alone. By Jesus, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of the cross. Here the Spirit says today. Thanks be to God. Amen. Rejoice in the Lord always and again I say, again I say, rejoice in the Lord always and again I say.
preeminence of Jesus Christ. Nobody higher. Nobody or nothing lower. Nothing wider than Jesus Christ. He is the top of the chart. That's him. That's who he is. And this morning, when I speak to you, I want you to leave here knowing fully who he is and who he is to you. If you know my spouse over there in that corner, and you meet her for the first time, most frequently, she is going to ask you, who is Jesus? What is Jesus to you? And where will you spend eternity? Some of us have been in church all of our lives. From our baby days, I said, to our retirement age. And we don't really know Jesus, except for the Christmas stories that we've been hearing all week long. And I'm going to remind you of them again. From the Christmas stories, we learned that Jesus was born in Bethlehem. His mother was Mary, a virgin, betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph. The Holy Spirit walked the conception and through supernatural means, we got Jesus. The story of Luke 135 and Matthew 118 reads, an angel said to them, fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that we will be full for all people. For unto you in this day the a son of God, born in the city of Bethlehem. Who is Jesus the Lord? The next time we hear of him, he's left that behind and on a pilgrimage to Jerusalem. And his mom, Paul, looked up and he was not with him. Where's Jesus, Joseph? I don't know, Mary. I thought he was with you. Hallelujah. They realized he wasn't with either one of them. And they rushed back to Jerusalem and found him in the temple, sitting among the rabbis, listening to them and asking questions. Luke said all who heard him were amazed. And his understanding, at his understanding, and his answers, way beyond his age. He was ranked higher. Uh, this boy got to be older than 12, they said. How could he know all of this stuff? Jesus was very excited. Then the story picks up again. 18 years later, Jesus goes to the Jordan River to be baptized by his cousin, John the Baptist. Then he gives them to the Jordan wilderness where he had fasted and prayed, full of the Spirit, Satan meets him in the desert. I don't know if you've ever felt real good, full of the Spirit, and here he comes. Here comes trouble. And Satan, he tempts Jesus to use his power to save himself rather than God's purpose for him. But the temptations only strengthened Jesus, made him more determined than ever to resolve to do God's will. How many of us have been told, oh, you, you shouldn't do that. Don't, I wouldn't do that if I were you. I wouldn't get this kind of car. I wouldn't do this. I wouldn't do it. And what do we do? Break our necks to go do it. <laughs> Jesus was fully human. But he was God. He didn't break his neck to do that. He continued to do what he had come here to do. What his father in heaven had assigned him to do. So he goes back to Nazareth. And he attends the synagogue. And he reads from the scroll of Isaiah. You might be familiar with this. The spirit of the Lord is on me. Because he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. 
to proclaim release to the captives yes. and receiving of sight to the blind, Amen. to deliver those who are crushed and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. The elders in Nazareth think he's presumptuous, talking among themselves. They said, isn't this Joseph's boy, that carpenter over there? <laughs> As one of them said, well, it's Joseph's son. They wanted to stone him to death. They thought he was blaspheming. So Jesus left Nazareth and he goes to Capernaum. When he calls his disciples and begins teaching and healing and proclaiming the good news of God's kingdom, it's through his teachings that we get to know the mind and the heart of the Savior, that Son of God. But then we don't want to forget. He interacts with others and how he did that. He leads and he teaches with such compassion and understanding how he confronts the hypocrisy of the certain leaders. We get a taste of his divine power and his miracle story. How he turned water into wine. How he multiplied loaves and fishes to feed a multitude. How he walked on the water. How he healed the sick. How he raised the dead. How he made the lamb, the lame to walk. How he made the deaf to hear. How the dumb began to talk. All oh, it's through signs like these that we come to know him as Edward. Not simply as as an inspired teacher and a miracle worker, but to do his job as the Messiah, the anointed one. After three years, Jesus takes his message to Jerusalem, and it leads to a showdown, and that leads to his arrest. He's tired, and he tried by the Jewish, he, he is trying by the Jewish council, being turned over to Pontius Pilate, who condemns him to die. He is crucified on Mount Calvary on a Friday and buried in a borrowed tomb. The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, and he was crucified on the third day, and he rose. The women came to anoint the body that morning. And they found the stone was gone. The angel asked, why do you seek the living among the dead? He isn't here, but he is risen. Here he is. <laughs> no power on earth can hold him down. They go back to the upper room and they tell the others that night, Jesus appears to the disciples and over the course of the next 40 days, he appears to the countless one. The final scene comes on a mountain near Jerusalem. He commissions his disciples to spread the gospel, the good news, and he promised to be with them. Then he ascends into heaven to be seated at the right hand of the Father. Well, that's what most people can tell you. I think from the stories that I've told you, someone in here has heard them all. Someone in here maybe has only heard one. And somebody in here has heard it for 80 years. For 80 years. And that's what they can tell you about Jesus. And to be fair, it's pretty impressive. Nothing wrong with it. Keep telling the story over and over. So looking back, we find hints of Jesus in that Old Testament, the creation of the world. In the beginning, Jesus created the heavens and the earth in Genesis. God created man in his own image, and the image of God created Jesus, who is the creator, him and male and female and male created he them. In the book of Exodus, Jesus Christ said unto Moses, he was God, even then, I am that I am. He said, 
This shalt thou say unto the children of Israel when Moses was asking, what do I tell them? Who sent me? He said, tell them I am. Has sent you. In the book of Psalms, David cries out to his God in heaven. And what did he say? He says, you are my shield. As he was running from Absalom. He said, you are my rock. When he was delivered and, and, and to, to uh, Samuel, uh, Saul. You are my shepherd, and I shall not want. You are my refuge when I'm in trouble. I'm trying to tell you who is Jesus. You are my fortress. You are my vindicator. You are my creator. You are my deliverer. You are my healer. You are my protector. You are my provider. You are my redeemer. In Sunday school, when asked by the class, who is Jesus? Children, one little girl put her hand up. She said, Jesus is God with flesh on him. Paul wants the people to know that Jesus knows them, like just like that little girl. We can't know Jesus until we know him with flesh on Jesus is God with flesh on Jesus is the agent of our creation. He's the divine word through whom all things in heaven and on earth was created. We didn't know that. We didn't know Jesus was the creator. We thought the Father, God, was the creator. This is what John told the early church in the opening verses of his gospel. He said, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was God. The Word was with God. And all things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that has been made. The Word became flesh and lived among us. We saw his glory, such glory as the one and only Son of God our Father full of grace and truth. Who is Jesus? Jesus is the incarnate word of God. Paul is on a roll right now. Bear with me, Lucia. He goes on to tell the Colossians in Colossians 1.17, Jesus is before all things, and in him all things are held together. I have known a lot of familiars or families over the years, whose family life centered around an individual or a couple. We still see it today. The kids come home from school during the Christmas holiday. They're not really there sitting there listening to the football game. They're in the kitchen. They smell all of the aromas coming from the kitchen. So they sit there with mom, with all of those women, they share. Mom is the glue that holds the family together. In many houses, it's the mother. I've seen churches whose strength and character reflected the faith of one individual who didn't necessarily choose to be that, the, the patriarch or the matriarch, but, was, but couldn't help it. It was just a role that was placed upon her. I want to tell you a story about a lady when I was a child. She was of the Pentecostal church. We were all Baptists and Methodist people around there. <laughs> so she would come into the neighborhood where we lived. We called her some Sister Dinkins, but I called her Aunt Mary. When Aunt Mary came in the neighborhood, women would go in there looking for a skirt to go over their pants. They were, the guys would hide that beer behind a, a, a rose bush, and some of the youngsters would hurry up and put out that cigarette. Oh, yes. I've seen churches whose strength and character reflected the faith of one individual. Didn't necessarily choose it as I said. But Paul would have us think of Jesus as that eternal bond that holds us together into a spirit of forgiveness, 
reconciliation, and in love. It's so important that we're in Christ Jesus, that we're one in heart and mind and purpose. And when Christ is not the center of our common life, we are hopelessly fragmented and divided. No one knew this better than this guy that wrote, Blessed be the tie that bind our hearts in Christian love. The fellowship of kindred mind and like to that of us. Finally, in Colossians 1.18, we're reminded that Jesus is the head of the body, the assembly. Who is the beginning and the firstborn from the dead? The, that in all things, he might have the preeminence. Just in case there's someone here who didn't know rule number one of the Reformed faith, Christ alone is the head of the church. All the members of the body take their directions from him. Some years ago, my friend suffered a stroke, and it left him considerable danger on the left side right side of the brain. And the left side of her body was paralyzed. Slowly she recovered and she gained most, but not all, of the use of her left arm and leg. The therapist explained that the lingering paralysis was due to the brain in injury. Listen, right here. The brain injury. The paralysis was due to the brain injury, not the muscles. See, the muscles depended on signals from the brain in order to know what to do and how to heal and what not to do. In 1 Corinthians 12, 27, Paul reminds us the church is the body of Christ. Individually, we are members of it. And whatever sin, uh, Whatever we say or do must come at his the, the preeminence, the rank, the power of Jesus Christ from the head. Until we share a common mind, the mind of Christ, we will be compromised at all. Only we share the mind of Christ and work together by the inspiration of his spirit. We will ever be united in thought, word, and deed. This is the goal for which Paul would have us strive. He says, for all followers was pleased to dwell in him. All fullness was pleased to dwell in him and through him to reconcile all things to himself, by himself, whether they be on earth and things in heaven or earth. Jesus gave his life to set you free. Nothing would please him more than for you to devote your life to getting to know him better, building up his kingdom and his church. In this community, the truth to tell, we shall never know the complete fullness of Christ any more than we can be able to comprehend the mystery of God. It's a lifelong quest to whet your appetite for what's in store for you if you're willing to try. Some songwriter put it like this, who is Jesus, the mediator, he's Emmanuel, the Messiah, he's the advocate, everlasting, king, chief, cornerstone, the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, Jehovah, king of kings and lord of lords, holy one, he's a bright and morning star. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The praise of peace. He's the Lord of glory. He's, he's the way, the truth, and the life. He's the word. He's the chiefest of 10,000. The one who is altogether lovely. And who is it? He is our Savior. Who is Jesus? He's our Redeemer. Praise the Lord. Who is the rose of Sharon? The lily of the valley. He's a day spring on high by the mighty one. He's the true vine, the true light. He's the son of God, one and only begotten son. Who is Jesus? Hallelujah. He is the lamb 
of God. He is our Passover. Jesus is our deliverer. He's our good shepherd. He's our Alpha. He's our Omega. He is our first and last. The desire of all nations and the captain of salvation. We stand eternity with him. He's our governor. He's our lawgiver. He's our great high priest. He's our invisible God. Oh, yes, he is. Yes, he is. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, he is. He is our umojo, the unity, the glue that bonds us together. Unity in the family and the community, in the nation. And the, he's our near. He's our purpose for being here this morning, to give him thanks for what he's done for us. Do you know him, who he is to you? Come quickly. God sent his son. We call him Jesus. What did he come for? He came to heal. Then one day, he begged our pardon. An empty grave is there to prove our Savior lives. Help me with this cause. Because he lives.
We affirmed earlier, we at Founders MCC practice the fourth principle for funds by the building and sharing of our treasures with MCCs all around the world. Our church gives 1% of all our undesignated offerings in support of the MCC movement in the Philippines to different churches. The Open Table MCC in Quezon City is one of the MCCs that we support with our time, talents, and our treasures. We recently received a video and the following thank you note from the congregation. That note reads, Thank you, Founders MCC, our mother church, and to our Bayanian Filipino community there. Thank you for many years of love and support to our community church. Thank you for the gift you have extended to us. May the light of Christmas shine upon your church community, and may you reflect the same light in our denomination and to so many others. In addition, the following, uh, uh, we're going to play the video, thank you, as well. Following the playing of the video, the ushers will receive the tithes and offerings. <coughs> of abundant giving, you constantly are blessing us. May we never take your blessings for granted. You surround us with a beautiful creation. May we never abuse it. You give us what we need when we need it. May we never lose our ability to be responsible stewards. Bless these gifts that have been given out of love and teach us to count our blessings and name them one by one. In Christ's steadfast love we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us continue in the spirit of prayer with the prayers of the people. O oh God, when our children are cut down in violence, when our people live in poverty, mm. when injustice rules the day, and animosity tear, tears human beings apart, you invite us to gather around your table. You lay out our 
a harvest of love and reconciliation, and offer us a feast of wisdom for our daily lives. In the words of Odi Ufa, Ifa, Kwanzaa Meditation, let us not engage the world hurriedly. Let us not grasp at the rope of wealth hmm. impatiently. That which should be treated with mature judgment, hmm. let us not deal with, a, deal with in a state of anger. When we arrive at a cool place, let us rest fully. Let us give continuous attention to the future and let us give deep consideration to the consequences of things. And this because our eventually passing. Blessed one, we offer this community prayer in your many names. Amen. Jesus gathered his people around him, much like we gather as a Kwanzaa family in unity. And he took bread and he blessed it and he broke it. And with self-determination, he proclaimed, this is my body I am giving for you. I am the harvest brought to the table. And then he took the cup and he blessed it and declared a community of collective work and responsibility saying, this is my life blood. It is pouring for you. Those who have gone before us have followed suit by de demonstrating cooperative economics, pouring themselves out as our examples. And so we too pour libations in their honor. We invite you right now to speak the names of any people who have led your way to today. Reverend Elder Frieda Smith. Wayne Bird. Jim Sandmeyer. Troy Perry, Nancy Wilson, Marge Dragona, Renee McCoy, Karen Ziegler, so many, such a cloud of witnesses we have over us, such a cloud of witnesses. God incarnate, bless these simple earthly things for our spiritual nourishment, that we may embody the purpose of our mission. Awaken our creativity and give us the faith to meet the gospel challenge. The bread that Jesus breaks with me helps me to truly see the call that I accept or not each day. touch with God. Oh, it tastes of the grain of heartache, but it's moist like the texture of triumph. This bread that is my life in Christ. 
Christ who dares me to eat fully or to grow stale. The cup that Jesus offers me it's filled with my destiny as one who like the Christ takes on the challenge to be fully in touch with God this cup it's bitter with a sting of failure oh while it's sweet with the promise of glory this cup that is my life in Christ who dares me to drink fully or go to waste. Amen. Amen. In order to prepare for the serving of this feast, I ask that the ushers, acolytes, and servers come forward at this time. I remind you that at Founders MCC, as with all founders around the world, this is an open table. You need not belong to this church or any church to participate fully in this feast. We have both regular and gluten-free wafers just let your server know. And if you prefer to receive communion with no human intervention, please know that we have a set aside sacred elements to our left, your right, where you can be at one with God. All are welcome and invited to this table of love, mercy, and freedom wherever you are on your life or spiritual journey. Come as the ushers guide you. The feast is ready, and God invites us to join the feast. All are welcome. Mm.
glad you came today. Hallelujah. And didn't Reverend Barbara preach her shoe heels off? I do hope you've enjoyed being in this house of worship today. Pray that you have been blessed and that you will continue to be here with us in worship. We're always glad to see new faces. You know you don't just have to come when mom's preaching. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. We'll love you every time you come. Amen. We're glad to see you all here and hope that you will be back with us in worship soon. Would you join us in our closing song?